So when you roll, right, you, the reasons you want to roll is more of a defensive play than anything. Um, sometimes you'll roll your profit out and just keep that trade alive and going as well. But for the most part, it's when kind of like you're either not quite at profit yet, it's still sideways, but you're you're naked and you have that gamma risk, right? Start You have to start having gamma risk uh, as you get under 21 days um, and then Vega as well. Two other Greeks and a whole nother topic on those ones that I really don't pay attention to. But nonetheless, when you're naked, you really need to roll right around, you know, that 21 day marker. Uh, so in this case, when you have a naked position on, uh, like for instance, my Qualcomm play right here, it looks positive, right? But this was actually an earnings play and right. I got a dollar 38 in credit. It didn't work. I ended up rolling it out because this was literally like, um, probably August 21st and I put it on. Yeah, it was less than less than 30 days. Uh, so I ended up rolling it to September, got another 56 in credit, right? So that adds to your net credit. And now you don't need half of $1.38. You only need half of the total of this for your 50%. Or in this case, I would only need $1.90, right? And then I rolled it again because it just didn't work. So I changed my strikes up a little bit. So you end up collecting credit, um, and then lowering kind of like lowering your cross basis so that when it finally, if it finally works out, you can still get out for a profit. So in this case, like Qualcomm, I haven't decided if I want to roll this one. We are at exactly 21 days, but I'm negative on it still. My my actual credit on on Qualcomm is uh 227. And it's at 273. So I literally only need like 50 cents more on this one. And so I don't know if I'm going to roll it. If I want to take that risk in the next week and see if a little bit more comes out and I can close it for a scratch. But otherwise, you would roll it. Like, sure, you're out of the money, right? This play is, well, you can see my strikes, right? I'm literally centered in this play with, an, you know, with my strangle here at the expected move. So I could leave it on. But if we have any sharp movements in Qualcomm after this 21 days, it's going to start affecting these options a little bit more. So I could roll it out because it's still perfectly in play here, right? And then just go out in time and, uh, and set it up again, right? Like that. So I could do an expected move. I can collect another, wow, another $165 here. This would put me, well, what am I at? 227, 327, 3. 80 like i'd be like 390 in credit and then now i have another 40 days for this play to work out okay so ultimately it's just like defense i'm really just rolling it out rolling it out until i can get a you know either i'm happy with it or i just want to dump it right one of the two um so in this case like i might consider rolling it out right now let's see we're slowly trending up so you know look at those Wicks. Oh, I'm on 15 minute. Give me a daily, daily, two year. Let me see what that looks like. So we're trending up. So I would, if I were to roll this play, I might change it a little long here, right? Uh, and, and that way, if it keeps this trend up, I still have opportunity to be profitable while collecting a credit, and I skew it a little long. Or I could do it like that. Get get a dollar in credit. So I haven't decided yet. I can release some buying power by rolling it, or I can see what Monday gives me. Like I said, I'm only 50 bucks away um, from being profitable or scratching on that trade. But ultimately, that's what you do. Now, rolling on defined risk, you don't really need to do that, right? There's no Vega and Gamma um, issues here with a defined risk trade. So you can literally leave it all the way on till expiration to let those probabilities work out for you. Um, but you'll see me occasionally roll a defined risk trade, right? Uh, which is what I was looking at with that WSM, how I was able to get 13 cents with it. But you saw that that was still rolling into the money and you're just like hoping on that case. So defined risk, I usually leave on, um, if it looks like it's within range, right? If you're deep in the money, you really got no choice. So why roll that, um, so that's why like defined risks are really hard to roll because to get a credit on defined risk, you really got to roll when it's 
out the money, maybe one strike into the money. Um, but then when, when you're that close to profitability, it's like, why roll, right? So that's why you don't really want to roll um, vertical spreads or iron condors if you're literally right there days from profit if you hold out. So that's kind of like the difference between the naked ones. Naked ones, you can always roll for a credit. Um, it's just depending on like how long do you want to roll for, okay? Yeah, Michael, your buying power reduces because you're reducing your risk. You got to think about it. The buying power is the risk the broker's assessing for your risk on that trade. So um, like here, Qualcomm again, right? My buying power, my capital on this play is $1,900. And you saw if I rolled it out in time because 21 days, right? A little bit more risk involved. But as soon as I go out to 45 days, even if I did an at expected move play, see how it reduces that. So I'll go from 1900 in buying power down to 1500. So you get more buying power back because you're going out in time, reducing your risk. Now, if I did something like this, let's see. Yeah, it's a, it, I increased the risk because I went at the money. So you see it's adding a debit here. So if I did that, that's bad. You don't want to do that, right? But you see, if I go further out of the money, it releases more uh, and now not a lot at this point your risk doesn't change too much more so that's why you'll see buying power increases when you roll out as well okay all right 